Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Suhini from South Bay, California and today is a great day so I decided to record outside. There might be a you know, few noises in and around so please bear with me. So today I wanted to make this special video and it's actually on special request from a few of my subscribers with regards to these rule changes and things that are affecting international uh, students and even you know people who are working or immigrants uh, in, in foreign countries. So uh, I wanted you to have all of the information and then I wanted you to process it on your own. If you like the content please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Okay, to start off, I wanted to give some context into my background so that you understand why I should even be talking about this topic. So I came to US back in 2008, so that's about 12 years back as a student. And then I did my master's, I did my PhD, I got employed. Uh, I actually was employed at a university, so it was H1B no cap. And then I went forward with my green card and then I've been working in industry. And I've been, uh, you know, I've been an industrial as well as uh, academic uh, background for, you know, over six years years and uh, I've been working on the EIML domain for a decade now. So I have, uh, you know, been through each and every, you know, been a part of the process and so I think I can talk about it. And that's what brings me to today's topic. So two things I wanted to start with. First of all, because of this pandemic, COVID-19, economy has been hit and it has been hit in all countries. Uh, some industries more than the others, but it has been hit in all countries. Because of which, in US specifically, a lot of, con a lot of companies have have started laying off and I live in the reside in the Bay Area where you know it used to be super hot for finding a new job or uh, you know the, the, the concept of layoffs was unheard of in this area but that has become much more prominent in you know in the past couple of months now how does that affect anybody who is trying to study abroad well, the, the one reason that it does that as soon as you graduate, so let's say that you take a huge hefty loan. Um, I, I came from India, and so, but I did come here on you know, no loan at all because I came on 100% on assistantship. But if you are planning on taking a, a huge hefty loan you know, from a foreign country and, and coming for your, your studies here, then that is actually a, a huge a decisive factor because there is you know, an issue with the job market. And this is what I'm seeing. So I have been mentoring students, not just in US, I've been mentoring students from India, from Sweden over the past uh, three years. And this is what I'm finding is everywhere, you know, students are having a hard time finding employment post their completion of their, you know, master's degree specifically, because it's, it's a short program and then, you know, finding a job right after has become difficult. So just because hiring has been frozen in most companies, just because companies are not hiring as much, uh, finding a job has become hard. Now, th there are two rules that I actually wanted to bring your attention to. So on June 22nd, and this rule was further amended uh, up until June 29th, uh, so the, the government of, of US uh, actually put a, a ban on H-1B, L-1 and J-1 entries into the country. What that means is, let's say that you are you are a student, uh, you're an, on an F-1 visa, and you, you know, have, have uh, applied for H-1B in the lottery, even if you're lottery was was picked up so it's it's this is under the h1b cap in april your i-797 or your work authorization will not be issued in october so you can either work on opt or you'll have to go back so this was one rule that that really uh, affected a lot of people and the second one that came by just this uh, monday so on july 6th uh, the ice or the Homeland Security, uh, uh, you know, they, they posted this uh, new rule that says that uh, international students, and this is specifically to F1 international students in US, for the pandemic, most of the schools are trying to make the courses fully online. So what this new rule says that international students cannot take a fully online course load while staying in US. So what does that mean? Let's say that you are an F1 student and you are at, at, at a prestigious uh, you know, US institution. If your university says that we are only going to have fully online courses for the fall semester, then all the international students have to pack their bags and leave. 
Now, this really affects a lot of students in in a lot of bad ways, because uh, you know they were here. Maybe a lot of people have that they're halfway through their degree, or you know some people are even thinking of of coming next year. But in in which case, this order is probably going to stay till the end of 2020. So these are a couple of things that you should keep in mind uh, if you are thinking of uh, you know travel abroad. That is getting a job. Is, is hard so you know getting into loans might not be a good idea at this time and the second thing is this this, this you know new recent rule that affects international students uh, you know from from taking a full course load at US institutions is, is actually harming the, the students in, in multiple ways so um, now coming to how long do I think this is going to stay on for Realistically, an academic year is from fall through spring, right? So fall, typically, if it's a semester system, it starts around uh, late August and it goes on to early June. And if it's like quarter system, then again, it'll probably start uh, late September. And again, the, the, the quarter or the academic year will end again in, in early June. So what this means is uh, uh, academic year 2020-2021 is going to be fall of 2020 and then spring of 2021. So what I'm, what I per, you know foresee from from my experience is that it is going to hit hard international students, at least for you know who are planning to come to US uh, in this uh, academic year 2020-2021, but also uh, you know it, it is going to even spiral through the academic year 2021 and spring 2022 as well, because we don't really know in us we nobody can can predict right now uh, if there's going to be a second wave of the pandemic or not in which case job cuts will be even more and again in in that situation nobody can predict uh in in what way uh you know the education system is going to get a hit so if there is a way for you to plan accordingly uh, I'm, i just wanted to give you the facts uh, i'm not here to give you any advice on what you should do uh, again if you can if you want to reach out to me uh, you know separately i'm more than happy to talk to you about what are the what are the you know options and and what are the possibilities we can even open it up in the chat here but today's video i just wanted to give you all of the information that you can then take forward in order to make your own decision so what i am saying is this situation is not going to go away any time soon uh, the the changes that we are seeing the effects and you know the repercussions is probably going to stay till spring of 2022 so bear that in mind and plan accordingly and uh, what we can say is if we all stay together if we voice our opinions uh, enough um, you know we should be able to uh, you know instill a change however some countries have have not offered such you know heavy uh, impositions like can uh, canadian universities are, are are still pretty much you know operating the, the way they have been but like i said uh, being a student uh, in a with a, with a hefty loan this time can be a burdensome because especially finding a job right after is turning out to be really hard so I open it up to questions, concerns, comments. Uh, please let me know. And if there is any way uh, or any other material that you would want me to cover or address, I'm more than happy to do that. Thank you so much and have a great weekend.